Hey up guys, what's going on and welcome back to the Breakfast Save. Yes, welcome back. It's been a week, of course, long time no see. Hopefully you've been well. Weather not caught you out. Bloody hell, it's been humid, hasn't it? Christ. Anyway, enough small talk. There's big business to go ahead with here. First and foremost, this match here. Leeds today and then Arsenal at home, which is also big business, of course. But for Bradford, Leeds had a little bit much. Now, of course, this is away the first time uh, Ellen Road has hosted a West Yorkshire derby since, well, Leeds got relegated at some point in the noughties and not entirely certain what year it was. But, at the very least, for Bradford, it's the first time Bradford had made the trip to Ellen Road in the Premier League for 21 years um, in that save, because it's 2022, of course, in here, and they got relegated in 2001 and then fell further. So, <laughs> and the Leeds business is actually even bigger, but I'll, I'll bring you back to the whole Leeds stuff shortly after I've run you through the matches we played since we last met with Watford at the start of February. That was followed by 19 days off, a fairly hefty gap. I'm assuming it was both international and then FA Cup because then we met with Liverpool midweek on the 23rd and well we didn't lose. So that was the main thing. The first time we have picked a point off any of the traditional top six so far in this Premier League campaign. Yes, the first time. Resisted them, resisted them, restricted them to a nil-nil. It was actually, in fairness, a pretty tight game as things go. Six shots, a mighty six shots from us and restricting them to only nine. Do you remember the reverse fixture earlier in the year? It was 32 shots or something for them to our zero. So, progress. Um, Willow got injured on that, which caused massive problems for her inside forward situation because that left us with just Torben. I'm so glad we stocked up on about nine left midfielders so yeah that happened and then what is actually realistically a fairly disappointing one all draw with Wolves now Wolves were in 19th in this particular season so drawing with them wasn't particularly great and Callum Gribben the one to rescue us on that one in the 92nd minute ex-Newcastle player evidently in this save Isaac Hayden getting on the score sheet for them and well the decent result against Liverpool, the disappointing against result against Wolves, and uh, after, of course, picking up a point against the top six side, thinking, oh, maybe we can, you know, contest this one. The Man United game, the reverse fixture at home, was probably the best performance we did against any top six side. And no, no. Uh, back to usual. 3 0. Uh, a mighty 6.2 from Andrew DeRees on that one. <sighs> Still not quite unlocked that one properly for us. Top six, top six we just disappear against and I have no idea why. We have performed magnificently against everyone who isn't a traditional top six side, really, apart from, say, that Bournemouth game, I suspect, really, and this Wolves one, not particularly great either. But for the vast majority, we've done pretty good against every other side that isn't a traditional top six, and I just don't know why it's such a big difference. Maybe they've just drifted that far apart. I can show you the table in a moment, and there is sort of slight reasoning to that. But thankfully, that was followed by a very entertaining on-television game against Leicester. 4-2. Uh, Tormin Ruiz, Hernandez and Garuri getting on the score sheet in that one. Uh, Hendricks has picked up a knock at some point during this, uh, training-wise. So he's managed... Strictly speaking, we scored five goals in that game. Just one of them was Chad Lamb. But got to get him something, I guess. Um, a bit entertaining. It was 3-2 at that point, and then we immediately got a fourth. So, worked out in the end. Uh, Chad Lamb, despite getting an own goal, 7.0 rating. David Rea... Not scoring known goal, 7.0 rating. Goalkeepers are broken, we all know this. Um, weirdly, I see Ben Oswald with a lower rating. So, yeah, good game for Pimo Chevron. Braze Lopez got three assists in that one, so he, he rocked out with a nice 9.0 in that uh, particular match. Three assists for Braze Lopez. He has. He, he's weird, he has his moments. He has his moments, Lopez does. But yes, I was just going to show you this Premier League table. And as you can see here, uh, we have 30 games played, so just the eight to go, two of which, of course, coming today. One point behind Bournemouth in sixth. Now, I did speak about a while ago uh, the possibility of Arsenal and Tottenham sort of picking up their sort of early, poor, for early season poor performances. There's a sentence there somewhere. I hope you found it. Tottenham have done so. They have rocketed themselves back up to fifth. But you can see there, 20 points behind fourth place Liverpool. So there is definitely some argument to be made about a massive discrepancy between those top teams and everyone else. 
That being said, Arsenal and Tottenham's teams aren't that bad. So the fact we've not particularly performed well against them in the league, we did get a draw again. We did beat Tottenham in the pre-season. It is worth noting, and they didn't feel the poor side in that match either. The fact we've not done well against Arsenal and Tottenham this uh, season is curious. Less curious is the Liverpool, Man United, Chelsea, Man City, because there is definitely a significant jump between everyone else and them by the points here. You can see that 20 points, still eight games to go. Let's not forget. So that gap could widen even further, and that, that's a fairly massive discrepancy. That said, uh, Leeds are in 12th. They're only eight points behind us, in as all things stand, and they are five places. So whilst this, of course, is the first time we've gone to Ellen Road in this Premier League return for both clubs, it doesn't look like we are going to see this fixture again next season. They are a solid 15 points ahead of Newcastle, annoyingly. Personal supported club, which of course isn't without its own turmoil right now in real life. Yay. Anyway, Bradford City, of course, where we are. 46 points. We actually, we kept getting, literally, the press conference before the match we secured our Premier League status this season. I was asked about, do I think I'm going to be able to stay up? Fair, fair to say, I said, well, of course I am. It's amazing how often they ask you that, despite the points gap. Sports Interactive, sort that one out. Don't do it on predicted positions. Do it on how many points you've got, please. Season preview-wise, though, of course, we are still 1,000 to 1. I don't know what... That's obviously just done on our squad makeup, but... <sighs> Leeds, in fairness, also 1,000 to 1. Let's face it, they're probably safe with 38 points at this stage as well. So, good for them, good for us, and good for West Yorkshire as a whole. Anyways, you may have seen from the actual schedule pages of this that it is a fairly tight match according to the... Betting on that one, the odds, uh, 6 to 4, 13 to 8, basically one step apart. So, very tight odds wise. They've just got the advantage with their home. And fair to say, actually, Leeds have had the better of us for the most part in our previous meetings in the Championship. Uh, doesn't like we met one time outside there because there's. Oh no, we've already played this season. I think we actually drew with them at home as well. Oh, well, that's news to me. Oder Pereira is on holiday. Well, that's great. I say on a holiday, he's on international break. Uh, Portugal on 23s. Let's maybe return. Oh, next uh, next week. Okay. Well, I didn't know about that. Oh, and so is Kiros. Well, that's that's great. I actually thought I actually thought Kiros was Spanish, if I'm honest. Um, welcome back, Garcia. <laughs> I mean, thankfully we've got Garcia to step into that gap. So that's great. Um, just gonna have to plug the gap with Taryn. By the way, finally got myself a new mouse, which actually is capable of clicking and dragging. Efficiency is returned now. You may have seen, well, you can see here on the right-hand side, I still have goals as an option here. Still got problem on that front. Uh, Tex and Hendrix are currently just returning to fitness, so I will not risk them for this match. But they are our leading scorers with 7 and 6, respectively. Lopez also on 6. So, sort of, I mean, in fairness, the attacking portions have sort of distributed the goals between them. We're not that far down the goal-scoring list in the Premier League. I think we're about 11th or 12th. Not that far down. Obviously, there's a discrepancy between our position and how many goals we scored on that particular table, but we're not that far off, and they have sort of spread them out a bit, and we do have three strikers that we have sort of rotated in. I'm going to keep the faith with Ruiz because he, well, he's ours, so his development, his development is necessary. Chris Willock is back for this match, so I have bobbed him on the left-hand side because his inside-forward status is a little bit more natural on that side there. Uh, otherwise, the team is as you would expect. Obviously, that Garcia thing has just also nipped in, but Osborne, Luperto, Garcia, Lama the back with Rare and goal. Ferreira, Hernandez, Martin in the middle, Willock and Lopez on the wings and the inside forward rolls, and Ruiz up front for this one. Guri is on the bench. There's an option. Grip is on the bench, of course, and Jordao's on the bench as well. I was actually half tempted because he has put in decent performances. He was sort of a stopgap, in my opinion, just for, before we get like a proper replacement next season. I was tempted to get him, but there's already a transfer arranged, so <sighs> never mind. So they've gone for a very traditional 4-4-2. They are not playing their star player, according to the um, news feed. I was told to be wary of Pontus Janssen, and he's on the bench, so that could be good for us. That's not Fernando Torres, is it? No, Ferran. <laughs> Ferran Torres. Okay. Wasn't sure if he was still kicking around in this save somehow. Of course, just uh, announced his retirement. Right, passionate. 
Let's give the fans something to cheer today. Of course, West Yorkshire Derby, and they've actually responded to that for once. It doesn't often... The fans one often has something to be desired as a response. But that said, it's worked this time, and off we go. Both teams in their home kits, white for Leeds, maroon for us. And they're also not playing what seems to be their first choice goalkeeper either, which is good news for us. Unless he's developed to a point where he's gone better than the one who has more caps for us. But it's five minutes in, there's a highlight already. That's why his freestyle defender, Luperto, with his excellent heading ability, the reason why we brought him in, brings that back forward for us. That's pinged off their defender, and they've just got hold of that, never mind. Giglioni? Giglioni? Garcia's nibbed in on that one, though. Hernandez. Possession's changing hands more times than I can count here. Lopez is going to run forward on this side here. Pass it out to Lamb, who runs inside himself. Martin gets sort of hustled off that a little bit, but Hernandez in space and over. Never mind there. Well, that was a lot of a lot of passing play before what was ultimately a disappointing finish. Hernandez has been booked, sadly. He's been sent off once already this season, so I'm slightly worried of that. Martin with a corner whips that in, goes to absolutely no one. They've picked up Redburn by the looks of things. Redburn will hoof that forward to Roberts. And, uh, well, Bamford has just run past Chad Lamb there. I'm not entirely certain what Chad Lamb thought he was doing. Rhea has collected that quite nicely, and that was, that was the highlight. That was the highlight. I'm guessing that was more impressive on the statistics front than it looked on the replay. But that said, 30 minutes gone in this game, and there's only been four shots in total. Not the great... Oh, God, now Lopez has been injured. Can we stop injuring our wingers? That'd be great. He is getting a little bit better, but we don't, strictly speaking, have a replacement for Lopez directly. We do have Gribben who can go on both sides. Ferreira pings that straight across to Hernandez. Lovely, nice from him. And he goes wide again. Someone might shoot on target. Oh, another highlight. Martin on a very wide... Oh, God, he's gone for it. He's gone for it. Ruiz on the route. Third time we're asking. We've got it in the goal. It's there. It's happened. We're good. Excellent. We are playing positive, by the way, uh, even though we are second favourite and away from home. It does seem to work positive that little bit more. But Martin, Pico Farrell with a first great save. Excellent second save. And let's be honest, that's an excellent reaction from Ruiz himself to get on the end of that for the third rebound. Second rebound, third shot. But Lopez, mm, he hasn't quite recovered all the way. So it does look like we're going to have to take him off. Great. 11 shots to 1, though, is pretty good going for the away side in a derby. Good news is Ruiz seems to be getting in. Yeah, don't get complacent. The job's not done. This is a derby. They're going to go for it. Oh yeah, I need to think about... Um, we'll let this play out for... Oh no, he, is, he did get a little bit better. So we'll just let that sort of tick under maybe 70% before we take him off fully here. Yeah, there we go. 60 minutes gone. We'll make that Lopez change. It's just gone to about two thirds total. Like I say, we don't really have a proper replacement. Willock's inside forward on the left. Guri can play over there, but we're just going to have to go with Gribben on the right. He has he is fairly both-footed, so that's not too bad a problem. So Gribben comes on on the right. It's a little bit annoying that Lopez hasn't had to come off there, particularly after three assists in the previous game. But Bree goes to Zaver. Guess that's pronounced. Bree, back to Bree, of course, here. Um, back to Zaver. Back to Bree. I might have to take Hernandez off, of course, here. Uh, next break in play after this highlight, just because I don't want to risk that yellow card. He's been sent off. Pretty much as soon as we signed him, to be honest. Um, oh, he is chasing... Is that him chasing after Torres? No, he's gone... Number 50 is Hernandez. That's an excellent assist, and... Equaliser. They, they've pulled in us, really. That's that's the signature... That's the signature assist we've seen from Ben Osborne about five or six times this season already. Is that from our own heart... Their own half... Oh, just nipped into our side, actually. But that that searching through ball over the, over the back line is... One we've seen many a time from our own... To, own wing back, so a little bit surprising we've fallen to it on our own side here. That's disappointing. Uh, but Hernandez is definitely going to be coming off here. Jordao steps in on that front. We ain't risking that yellow card again. Because last time I said, I'll oh, keep him on. He got sent off. Another 10 minutes gone by, pretty much here, and Willock's not having the best of games, so we'll bring Gurion on that side as well. Just freshen up the attacking front of this. Garcia is not actually at the best of games. You just saw him ticking between 6.6 .6 and 6.5 on the ratings. Uh, Martin clears that. Guri actually ends up on that because number 30 just decided to ignore the ball entirely. Uh, is going to try and close him off a little bit here. But Guri manages to get the cross in. Where is this highlight going? Because I really thought that was going to be it. Peacock Farrell takes his time before hoofing that up the pitch. 
Luperto and Garcia just played out between themselves briefly here. Forward to Martin Osborne. Martin again, not really done any substitutions based on fitness this match, which may cause problems here in these last five minutes. Just done entirely on how well they performed. Go oh God, Ruiz smashes that past the post. Good Lord, that was a hefty amount of force on that shot. Yeah, Martin's actually struggling a little bit at this stage. Four minutes added, not really going to change anything this stage. They have got back in this match a little bit. They've had far more, far more interaction on this second half. Then we have, oh, please do not. Rhea gets onto that, great. End of injury time, 1-1 one, one away in a derby is, it's not disappointing, but I would have liked more from the game in hand we had over Bournemouth here. Because apparently we have worst goal difference. But one all, definitely had the better of play, so it is slightly disappointing, but one all away at rivals is not to be sniffed at. And two draws this season means, well, it basically just means that Braggy Rice is non-existent for this year in West Yorkshire. I'm actually going to say unlucky because we did put in a good performance. I would have liked slightly better on the accuracy front of the Sean shooting thing. But one point, still one on our goal difference. Now, of course, you can see here Liverpool have already won the, won the uh, Carabao Cup. So seventh could pick us up European football. So as long as we stay in this seventh place. Now, West Ham have an opportunity to leave both teams here. Change isn't great. But... Still seven games to go, and everyone's very tightly packed in this area still. And apart from this Arsenal game, our run in is pretty decent. So this international break actually happens now in proper life. It's just annoyingly infringed on that Leeds game. So I'll join you back for the Arsenal match. Just before we start this match, I did completely forget to say before the Leeds match that youth intake did happen. No, no nothing. Best prospect is still one from last year. Um... But my, bear in mind, my staff are still not that great. So, I mean, he could be amazing. He might not be. Um, it's a striker. Mike Meachin. Might see him at some point. He's been doing pretty good in the under-18s, in fairness. So, All right, that's the thing. But nothing amazing. Probably backup players at best from this year. But this Arsenal match, you may have seen that we actually are favourites for this one. Remarkably. And for this match against Arsenal, we are basically at full strength. Now for some reason Hernandez is way more tired than everyone else. I suspect he was on international duty because frankly he's amazing. Especially for an 18 year old. But he's on 88% which is mm, probably not the best to start with. Just that little bit too low down for my liking. But um, Jordao is obviously there to step in. Uh, I would have liked to start with both Jordao and Hernandez for this one just being on both our better players. Martin is still developing so I'd rather reserve him for this particular one. That said we do have Tex back though which is a massive massive boon. Uh, we do have Hendricks back as well but I am slightly reluctant to start Hendricks because he sort of drifted off a little bit before he got injured in terms of performance wise and Ruiz has scored in the last two matches so the momentum's with Ruiz at the moment so I'm going to stick with him for the start. Obviously we have Hendricks on the bench for this Otherwise, lineups unchanged. It's a very um, different looking Arsenal side. Apart from Bamiyang, Mkhitaryan, and Socrates, I'm not entirely certain if any of those are existing Arsenal players. The few on the bench, well, Becker, Wobi, Nelson. I'm not sure any of those others are actually Arsenal teams. We owe Arsenal and what happened last time. Now, I'm not going to do that because that always gets people sent off. Recent form standings have Arsenal in 14th, whilst we're 11th. Let's show them why. Yes, let's show them why we're both average. What a line that would be. There isn't really a line for this one. I want Go out there and impress me is what I want to say. Yeah, go on then, I'll do. I have faith in you. I have faith. All of the faith. You know the drill by now. I really hope that's something um, sports interactive will look at for the next one, because... Frankly, there's only one thing that seems to ever work. Good lord, that's it's got pinged at Otto, whoever that is. Um, Johnny, is that his real name? I'm not sure who Otto is. <laughs> no one on that team is called Otto. Otto. Oh god, this is confusing. I'm guessing it's Johnny. It's got to be Johnny's proper name. Okay, Martin over this free kick, and well, that's wide. And that entire half was just one. Far from pleased. I'm just yeah, far from pleased because 
I've seen one highlight, so clearly we're not doing that well. But this this particular uh, this particular season is going to the wire between Chelsea and City at, as things stand, and we actually are dominating Arsenal in this match, which is a sentence I was not expecting to say at the start of this season. Frankly, even now, uh, that sort of ends up with a basic Luperto, who for no apparent reason just decides to give it back to Cancelo. Uh, Memphis is, I mean, that highlight from above did not do Raya justice. I don't think there. Because that was the slowest head of all time. I assume Rayo was wrong-footed here, but this is terrible work from Laporto for heads it, heads it outwards, knock it out for a corner. Nope, nope. It's... I mean, the animation doesn't do Rayo justice there either. I don't think. Going to demand more because let's be honest, we should be on top of this match, and we're not. Was well, Socrates playing a right back there previously? Lamb, but did my eyes deceive me, or did Socrates and Cancelo just swap positions on the bomb thing there? Tex Marie's plenty of space for Osborne on the left-hand side here to whip one in, and does so. Gets to no one apart from Martin, picks that up, and equaliser. Lovely. That's what we want to see. Uh, points, potentially against Arsenal here. But, frankly, I would like to get a win out of this, because the way we're playing deserves a win here. Just... All the time in the world. Frankly, classic Arsenal defending. Apologies, Arsenal fans, but had all the time in the world to pick a pick a spot there. I've made no changes. Um, Martin is usually the best option to take off at this stage, and he's he's not going to be. Hendricks is Hendricks is going to make an appearance. Osborne's not having the best of games either, which is a little bit rare. So Zagre is going to come on for the last twenty or so. We do have Hernandez on the bench for a nice little bit of impact sub, maybe. No, no, nothing's happening. Let's get up one of our best players on then. We will swap Jordal and he scored, but let's get our excellent players on and just demand a little bit more for the last last ten here. Not going to change anything otherwise. No, nothing's happening. Nothing, nothing is happening. It's going to end up 1-1, which against a traditional top six side, I obviously have to always qualify things with the word traditional because, you know, Tottenham and... Well, Tottenham are back in fifth, so but Arsenal have capitulated this season. Um, they had a terrible start, picked themselves up, and then just had a very average middle now. If that had gone past, that would have been wonderful, but that match went past far too quickly for me to really have an opinion. Hendricks had a decent time with the last 20 minutes, apparently. I'm not far from... They need something between far from pleased and unlucky, because unlucky suggests that they played well. But I'm going to go with it. No one cared. Just get out of there. Um... English prospects actually still on international duty during this time, but thankfully he's not with us. As things stand. But of course, next time around, there's only six games left, so we will finish off with Brighton and Burnley. Now, Brighton is actually a match we brought you earlier in the season, but we did lose that one, so there is definitely a reason to bring you it again. Brighton and Burnley for the last two, last episode of this season. I'll see you again for that one. But, as you can see here, we... Bournemouth do have a game in hand. Thankfully, West Ham haven't played at all. Okay, they, they've got two games in hand on us now and only three points behind. Let's hope they lose one. I would love just I would love for something just to be able to, to show like three teams worth of run-ins, essentially. But our run-in isn't too bad. It's Cardiff, Palace. We do have West Ham in that bunch, actually. Southampton and Brighton. So we're all bottom half teams apart from West Ham. So our run is pretty good. If we can just get the better of West Ham in that match we have there, we're in a very good position in terms of getting, potentially, European football here. But next time around, Brighton and Burnley. I'll see you for that one. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly feel refreshed from the week off. But until next time...